Go. Hello, Athelton. Just wanting to finish up, well, finish up this part of the week of Jesus' last week before his crucifixion and resurrection. And actually, Friday is the day that he was crucified. This is probably the second most well-known part of the Jesus Easter story. Of course, second only to his resurrection from the dead. Um, I can't tell you the whole story. It fills chapters of the Gospels. But I do want to focus on just one, uh, three or four verses found in John 19. It's the story of Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea. Now, you probably know about how Nicodemus, back in John 3, came to Jesus by night and asked him some questions, and how as part of that dialogue, Jesus told Nicodemus the most powerful words in the whole Bible, I do believe, probably some that you've memorized. If so, say them with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Yeah, that scripture text was told to Nicodemus. Now here, years later, Nicodemus has a chance to be big and bold or melt into the framework. Before I tell you what happens, let me ask you a question. When you think of superheroes, what do you think of? Pause the film right here and just take a moment to talk with your family, community, or maybe write in your prayer journal. What do you think of when you think of superheroes? I'm guessing that some of you chose superheroes like are in um, the movies, but maybe some of you chose superheroes that you deal with on a day-by-day -day basis. Maybe you mentioned a teacher, um, a pastor, a um, care worker that is helping us so much in our COVID-19 crisis right now. Maybe you mentioned your parents. Whoever you mentioned, think about why they're a superhero. Why are they a superhero and why does it matter? Okay, so now that you've come up with one and know why they're a superhero, want you to think about Nicodemus and a friend of his named Joseph. They decide to be superheroes. And you may ask, how do they do this? Well, very simply, when everybody else is against Jesus, at least all the popular, important, rich, influential people are, Nicodemus and Joseph come forward and say, hey, Jesus has died. We want to bury him properly. In fact, it's interesting how John 19 mentions and connects the two and says, Nicodemus, comma, the man who had spoken with Jesus, comma, and then tells the rest of the story. He and Joseph um, bring the embalming spices. Probably took 70, 80 pounds of spices back then to embalm a body to make it ready for burial. Part of the way they did burials back then. Um, and they go and get Jesus, and together they bury him in Joseph's tomb. That took courage. Amazing thing is, that's the last time in the Bible that Nicodemus is mentioned. Thanks to other sources, we hear that he, most likely, according to extra-biblical sources, spent a lot of his fortune in coming years to support the early Christian church. But as far as the Bible goes, this is his last mention. And you know what? For a last mention, it's a really good one. Nicodemus and Joseph stepping out to be heroes. Now here's the question for you. Are there ways that you can choose to be the hero? That is, step up, stand out, be strong, stand up for Jesus. Can you make a difference? Can you make a commitment? Can you go Jesus' direction even when not everybody else is? That's my challenge for you this Easter Friday. God bless you. Happy Sabbath.